In this video, we'll talk about mathematical expectation to tie our discussion of probability theory together with what we really care about, data. Here we have an example of a sample from a distribution where the distribution has parameters 0 and 1 specifying the center and spread of that distribution. The mean of the histogram is 0 0.123, which is close to the mean of the true distribution. We make the connection between data and probability distributions through what are called expectation values. We define the expectation of a random variable as the sum of the values of the random variable times the probability of observing those values. For the expectation of the random variable itself, we often use the special symbol mu. In general though, the notation E with the square brackets means to take whatever is inside the square brackets and do a summation over it, weighing by the probability. For example, for a Bernoulli random variable, we have the expectation of x is 0 times 1 minus p plus 1 times p and all that's equal to p. For a binomial random variable, we have this formula that gives the expected number of successes in n trials. When we have a continuous random variable, the sum becomes an integral, but we won't worry about that in these lectures. An important prop property of expectation is linearity. This is the fact that the expectation value of the sum of two independent random variables equals the sum of the expectation values, and we can see it by plugging in the definition of expectation. First, we write the definition of the expectation of the sum of two random variables. Then we separate the two terms into two separate sums. Next, we use the important property that the probability to measure the value xi and any value of y is equal to the probability to measure xi alone. That is, since it doesn't matter what value of y we measure, only the probability of measuring x is relevant. After this bit of magic, we just substitute the definition of expectation in, which shows the linearity of expectation. Expectation also scales, so that if we multiply all the values by a constant, the expectation gets multiplied by the same constant. Pause here and make sure you understand this derivation. As an example, let's calculate the expected number of heads after three coin tosses. First, we just plug in the binomial distribution into the definition of expectation. Then we use p equals 1 half and calculate all the coefficients. Add everything up and we get 3 over 2, which seems reasonable. In three coin tosses, we expect 1 and a half heads. The variance of a random variable is the expectation of the difference between the random variable and its expectation squared. Remember that we have n experiments and xi is the value of the random variable in each experiment. When we expand it out, this should remind you of the definition of variance from the previous lecture, except with extra factors of p of xi. Intuitively, you can imagine that in real data this probability is implicit. If the data is sampled from some underlying probability distribution, then the value of xi occurs with probability p of xi. So let's say we had a biased coin that came up heads 80% of the time. If we did 100 coin flips, we'd get around 80 heads and 20 tails. So the ratio of heads to tails is roughly the same as the ratio of their probabilities. We'll make this connection a bit more formally in a minute. First, let's see another common way to calculate the variance. We expand the square, then use the definition of expectation, and we find that the variance is the expectation of the square minus the square of the expectation. Pause here and make sure you understand this derivation. For your information, the quantity expectation of x squared is often known as the second moment of the probability distribution, and generally the expectation of the nth power of x is known as the nth moment. We won't cover it in this course, but moments and related ideas, such as moment generating functions and characteristic functions, are key in proving theorems about probability distributions. The only theorem we will talk about here is the very important result called the law of large numbers. We won't prove it, but it states that, for a sequence of independent, identically distributed random variables, the sample mean gets closer and closer to the true mean mu. The sample mean is what we call the average before, and we calculate it from real data by summing up all the values and dividing by the total number. So the law of large numbers is a link between samples, which we have in practice, and distributions, which are theoretical constructions. We can break it down a bit more. We imagine something like the coin tossing experiment, repeated trials where outcomes are described by the same probability distribution. This is the independent, identically distributed part. The sample mean is our best guess at the typical result after making n trials. Say it's the average number of heads. The law of large numbers says that if we do enough experiments, the sample mean will be very close to the mean of the distribution, meaning that the average number of heads will be close to the expected number of heads. In our coin tossing experiment, each coin toss has a Bernoulli distribution with mean p. We calculated the expectation before and found that it was p. The law of large numbers says that for large n, xn, that is the average number of heads in n coin tosses, approaches p more and more closely as we increase n. We will explore this more in the workshop, as well as the more powerful theorem called the central limit theorem, which tells us not only what happens to the mean, but what happens to the entire probability distribution. 
Generally though, this is the idea behind frequentist statistics. A large sample is a good approximation to the theoretical distribution, and a lot of the deeper theoretical work is involved in calculating how large the sample needs to be and how we can correct for small samples and things like that. In the final video, we'll discuss an alternative approach to probability, based on ideas about confidence rather than repeated experiments.